Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media, where we are a little behind in our Trump decode for, uh, for the Trump tweets. I was kind of waiting around, Thomas, to see if anybody else would pick up the slack, but I couldn't find anybody. So here we go. Let's keep the pace quick, okay? Yes, ma'am. No going in the weeds. No, ma'am. Uh, we're going to start at June 24th, 2018. Folks, you know how it works. Look at the description box below, click on the link, and you can follow along. Democrats, fix the laws. Don't resist. We are doing a far better job than Bush and Obama, but we need strength and security at the border. Cannot accept all of the people trying to break into our country. Strong borders, no crime. Democrats, fix the laws. That's in contradistinction to don't resist. They have a resistance movement. That is unlawful. He's basically saying, Democrats, you are unlawful. And they are in the resistance. It's You can't resist a law. That's no, you try to pass a new law, but you can't resist a law. That's called breaking the law. That's why he always says no crime and strong borders, no crime. But he's always pointing at the crime. These are the crime of the Democrats. And as he's pointing out, when they come across the border, they break into our country. If they broke into your home, what would you think? All these people who want these people to come across open borders, wait until they have to enter into your home like they have in Europe. And what I liked this week was not the picture of Trump on time with the little girl. It was Trump on, on the Time magazine cover. And right behind him was Obama and Bush. <laughs> Same exact thing was going on, but worse. Well, we know that. And we also know that this is an invasion and the Democrats are enabling this invasion of our country. Very anti-American. Uh, next tweet. We cannot allow all of these people to invade our... Oh, there you go. Invade our country. When somebody comes in, we must immediately, with no judges or court cases, bring them back from where they came. Our system is a mockery to good immigration policy and law and order. Most children come without parents. Law and order. All he's doing is enforcing the law. That's what he was hired to do. Those people who don't enforce the law, sanctuary cities, they are unlawful. He's now good. Uh, it is good that he has named them invaders. It is an invasion. They are breaking into our country. They're it is an invasion. In invaders, and, and they're here to disrupt our country. They're war actors, and the children are usually human trafficked. He's going to mention that again up here. And the point is, is they don't deserve judges and courts because they are not citizens. They break a law. They do not get representation. They are not citizens. If they sought asylum without documentation, that is their problem. They needed to have some documentation and they needed to do it right. And Mexico should have accepted them before we did. Because if they're leaving Mexico, what we need to address is not asylum. We need to address why is that country in a condition where an asylum would be sought by someone leaving that country? Let's solve the problem. That's what Trump is doing. He says, no more U.S. aid, no more giving away of billions of dollars, $80 billion a year, to countries like Honduras, El Salvador. You can't get your problems together. You want to empty your prisons and send them to America under the auspices of their children. MS-13 is coming in as children or coming in with human traffic children. There is so much crime. All these people who believe they know what's going on, they ought to go down to that border and see what's really there. And you know, the countries you just named, well, the money is coming to them most of the time through these corrupt things called USAID and OPIC, O-P-I-C. And the countries and the impoverished don't get the benefits of the monies because the banks and these corporations are the middlemen. Exactly. One of the people running for um, a major office in Mexico, I think, for the president, of uh, Mexico said that it is a human right that Mexicans should be able to cross an open border into America. <laughs> okay. All right, next one. Our immigration policy, laughed at all over the world, is very unfair to all of those people who have gone through the system legally and are waiting online for years. Immigration must be merit based on merit. We need people who will help to make America great again. That is another, uh, we're going to call these planks. This is a plank for the new Trump Republican Party. And if you don't get on board with these planks, Democrat or Republican, you are not going to win. The United States is insisting that all countries 
that have placed artificial trade barriers and tariffs on goods going into their country remove those barriers and tariffs or be met with more than reciprocity by the USA trade must be fair and no longer a one-way street. Okay, one-way street, this is a reference to one belt, one road, the Chinese way, the totalitarian way, which they're demanding the rest of the world bow down to because they economically went in and bought up the resources of many countries and then forced them into all kinds of things through basically extortion. So what's he saying? He's saying the same kind of thing was happening with these artificial trade barriers and tariffs. This is just extortion of America. Remove them or you will have, and I want to key in on the words, more than reciprocity. In other words, not an eye for an eye, but as the Israelis now say, two eyes for an eye. So he's basically saying, no, 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 I'm not going to play the game with you anymore. I played the public game on the world stage and acted like you really had a choice in this. But you don't. You are going to remove all artificial trade barriers and tariffs, or I am going to make it worse for you than you can possibly imagine. Guess what happens if we don't count on other countries to manufacture for us? Oh, it strengthens us. Anyone who thinks that by refusing to trade with us is going to hurt us is mistaken. It will strengthen us. This could be part of his brilliant plan. I don't know that it is, but it certainly might be. Um, then the next tweet is that he is going to be visiting Governor Henry McMaster for uh, um, for some campaigning, and that incident has already come and gone. Uh, the next one is a retweet, Marco Rubio. Trump haters still haven't realized how much they help him with their condescension. Yep, that's what he says, condescension, <laughs> of those who either voted for him or do. And we've been saying that all along. Okay, let's just work conservatively. Over 85% of the Republican Party approves of Trump. That means he's getting all their votes again in the next election. We, it had to have been a landslide. So it had to have been the biggest numbers we've seen for a president, okay? So when you want to criticize Trump, you're criticizing the, over the majority of Americans. And every time you do, you make yourself look stupid, Democrats, and complete far left-wing nutcases like Bernie Sanders, who now says he's not going to be a socialist, he's going to run the Democrat Party. Uh, Bernie, what are you? Well, you know, are a, you a socialist, Democrat, Democrat, socialist? Are you a Marxist? Are you a communist? Are you a big banker because that's who gave you your money? Are you a George Soros this nation? For the last two years, he's had a million-dollar salary. What is that? Is that a socialist millionaire? George Soros paid for his campaign $2 billion to the Democratic National Committee. Okay, folks? Look into it. He is a joke. Oh, okay. Now... We're going to slow down the pace a little bit because speaking about that crazy left, the next tweet we're going to look at is Congresswoman Maxine Waters, an extraordinarily low IQ person, has become, together with Nancy Pelosi, the face of the Democrat Party. She has just called for harm to supporters, of which there are many, of the Make America Great Again movement. Be careful what you wish for, Max. You see, this is serious. This is this is a crime. What she has done is what Loretta Lynch did when she went on air and said to Americans, "You need to get out and fight and bleed, and some of you will die." Yes, that is necessary. Those are her words. So that's this is what we have here now. Maxine Waters is the person who's putting everything on the line. But I liked what you had Truth News headlines. It showed that it's her four point eight million dollar. Castle was not even in the district she represents, and where she votes was so on the edge. I mean, she is such an edge writer. She is so corrupt, and all she is is a megaphone. She, she's like North Korea was until Trump took care of North Korea, a megaphone for China. She's a megaphone for Nancy Pelosi and the failing Democrat Party. But nobody's going to touch her because she's an old black woman. Yes, because, you know, there's still a, a terrible stigma with the entire concept of racism that if you even call things what they are it is immediately assumed that you're a racist well i think that you couldn't ask for a bigger racist than maxine waters um because well i won't go into all of that but let's just say he says be careful what you wish for max what he's saying is 
you just called the police on you. You just called for some of your supporters to be locked up. You just called for a riot that is illegal. You called for a seditious, treasonous attack, a resistance against not only Trump, but anyone who is part of his administration or anyone who believes in MAGA. You just declared open civil war. I thought the civil war was over, Maxine Waters. Why do you want to start it over again? Well, if anyone is harmed because of this, they can walk it right back to Maxine. Oh, absolutely. And she's so low IQ. He calls low IQ person. That's the word stupid. Let me translate that. I'll decode that. Stupid, stupid Maxine Waters. Or the Dunning-Kruger uh, effect. Oh, absolutely. You know, sometimes people are so stupid, they don't even know that they are stupid. And it's a syndrome and she has it. Okay, the next one. Surprised that Harley Davidson, of all companies, would be the first to wave the white flag. I fought hard for them, and ultimately, they will not pay tariffs selling into the EU, which has hurt us badly on trade, down $151 billion. Taxes, just a Harley excuse. Be patient. Taxes, just a Harley excuse. They're moving it there to save money and to do what the big companies do because they're going against what they said before during and after the election. And so Trump is pointing this out. He can't quite call them liars, but they're liars. And they are, they're really feigning because they're, again, not very intelligent. They don't know that Trump is in the middle of a deal and they think they're jumping ship and being smart before the deal is over. When the deal is over, there will be no tariffs. There will be equal trade. There will be no barriers. You will be able to sell those Harleys for a fortune in Europe instead of what happens now. And if you go there to build them there, sorry, you're going to be taxed when you come back into the country, so you're going to lose. Harley Davidson, don't do what you're doing. Let me be your advisor. You know, uh, I can do your company chart, and I can tell you what you're doing is a big mistake well, any way probably, you want to go. They're probably all run by liberals, and they're making decisions from that point of view. I would suggest that the... Almost every single person riding a Harley Davidson voted for Trump. So if you want to move to a foreign country, you lost all those buyers. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now on to one of your favorite directors, David Lynch, who said Trump could go down as one of the greatest presidents. People call David Lynch one of the great geniuses of our age. All I can say is he's awful late in the game to be saying this. It's about time, David Lynch. Okay, the next one is a retweet. Uh, White House, today, real Donald Trump and FLOTUS welcomed King Abdullah II and Queen Rania of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan to the White House. And you didn't see any Americans bowing before any monarchy, but you saw as the monarchy coming over here to kiss the rear of Donald Trump, who just with OPEC alone, as we pointed out, and now Trump knows because it rose to the top, no doubt, and bubbled up, and he got to see that we've given why, how many billions to Jordan to build a wall when we don't have one in America? We drilled oil in Jordan for who? Who were the beneficiaries of these OPEC loans? Who were the beneficiaries of the USAID? So what did he do? OPEC, we're just going to kind of stop that, but I don't have to say anything. It's a private corporation. USAID, he came out and said... I'm ending all this nonsense. And if you don't reciprocate with us in trade, in immigration, and in respect, and in carrying your own weight, you lose. So they came to bow before him. Ooh, when are we going to see Queen Liz get over here and do Queen a little Liz, butt, butt kissing? Well, she wants to take him to Balmoral, to the most secret of all of her places, where they conduct some of the most evil things, so that she can bow before him. Because they all know they've lost the battle. As long as Trump is supported by Americans and loved... You see, they don't understand that energy and literally mental energy, higher mental energy, and what we would call spiritual energy, prayer of all these people, that's what's protecting Trump. Okay. Why is Senator Mark Warner, Democrat, Virginia perhaps in a near drunken state, claiming he has information that only he and Bob Mueller, the leader of the 13 angry Democrats on a witch hunt, knows. Isn't this highly illegal? Is it being investigated? Okay, I'm going to go off on this one. I'm going to try not to yell. 
Let's go with what Trump is saying first. Yes, it is illegal. It is collusion. And we already have the proof that Mark Warner had already been working with Christopher Steele long before Robert Mueller was made aware of it. Mark Warner is the Democrat on the absolutely corrupt Senate Intelligence Committee, where we have had James Wolfe, who has been prosecuted and is being, excuse me, indicted and is going to be prosecuted for his leaks that had become institutionalized with Alvy Watkins, his prostitute, who was even put up for a Pulitzer Prize for all of the leaks that she gave. Oh, and we know what she paid for those leaks, don't we? And so he was working directly with Mark Warner. As a matter of fact, we have communications that show that Mark Warner in January of 2016 tried to contact Christopher Steele. So Mark Warner, because he'd already been informed, because he's on the Senate Intelligence Committee, and it was already compromised through Henry Kerner, James Wolfe, Amanda Renteria, and almost every other intelligence aide on that Senate committee. And we know that Dianne Feinstein stepped over the ethical question of taking behind closed door testimony of Glenn Simpson, her friend, Fusion GPS. Oh, Glenn Simpson. Oh, yes. Christopher Steele. Oh, yes. What am I insinuating? That the intelligence committee, including the Republican, Burr, and everyone else on that committee was complicit with the dossier attack on candidate Trump, Trump, President-elect Trump, and President Trump. In other words, we still have to this day an active counterintelligence operation that is even actively, not only in Adam Schiff in the House Intelligence Committee, but through Mark Warner, it has been coordinated from the beginning, which we told you about. And so Mark Warner knows all of these things. We have an eight-minute tape that we have where he's being interviewed by, what's his name, uh, Brett Baer, mm-hmm. who who acts like the biggest lightweight on the face of the earth and doesn't confront all, any of the lies. Eight minutes of solid lies out of that man's ho- mouth, Fox and I want to go over every one of them. All right, well, that's because Fox News is fake news, folks. I mean, it's just keeping you in the reservation, on the plantation. Absolutely. So the collusion here is what <clears throat> Trump is talking about. You're accusing Trump of collusion? How about the collusion that he, Mark Warner and a drunken fit who says, give me another drink and I'll tell you top secrets that nobody but me and Robert Mueller knows. Now, wait a second. If that's the case, that's admitting collusion. Now, he didn't say this in testimony. Or the eight minutes that he said on Fox News the other night or yesterday or today it could have been. Those eight minutes, those are all lies. Had he said that under testimony he would have literally, literally hundreds and hundreds of, of perjury of things that he, oh, he knows. Oh, please. Don't tell me anything about perjury. We see these people lying right and left and nothing's happening. And that's Trump's <clears throat> next phrase. Is it being investigated? In other words, Jeff Sessions, are you home? We no, know I'm he's not. not. The hearing of Peter Strzok and the other hating frauds at the FBI and DOJ should be shown to the public on live television, not a closed-door hearing that nobody will see. We should expose these people for what they are. There should be total transparency. I am in total support. Why is that? He better not be in closed hearings. We the people want to see what that man has to say for himself. He was a fool because he worked all throughout the Inspector General believing that he would be um, exonerated. And he's a fool because he waited until action was taken against him for uh, all of his unprofessional conduct. So if he goes before uh, open door, closed door, doesn't matter, he's probably going to plead the fifth, or he will simply come out like Adonis Brazil with a fantastic story, which is nothing more than their alibi, or like a Jonathan Weiner, here's my alibi, or like a Hillary Clinton who's been crying her alibi ever since the she lost the election oh he, he says in there oh these oh these lies of warner were just so horrible that it's awful i, I can't get them out of my head uh, and i will be anxious to share them with you so that you will not be convinced even when you're watching fox news that that is anything like the truth because what that man said everything was a lie so peter struck he is a liar he will probably just plead the fifth i i don't know i don't want to predict that because i think that he wants to go on record as being the first person who the congress might give immunity to because he is the key 
player. He is the keystone. And if he goes for immunity, he can take down President Obama. So, House Republicans could easily pass a bill on strong border security, but remember, it still has to pass in the Senate. And for that, we need 10 Democrat votes, and all they do is resist. They want open borders and don't care about crime, need more Republicans to win in November. I did skip over two minor little tweets there. This isn't a plank. He keeps saying it. Heavens for Betsy. Anyone running for office better be saying these things. And listen, all you do is need, just repeat these folks. Republicans who really are MAGA, Uh repeat these words. Uh, Wait a minute. If you already have a track record and you've shown that you are resisting, if you're even or if you're a Republican and you haven't given the people what we want, we're going to call you out. So don't think for one minute you're going to sit there and tell us one thing and then get elected and get in there and do something else. We're going to ride you so that you do it what the way we want it done. Yeah, you might as well go out there and say the Democrats are resisting because they want MS-13 criminals to come across the border and kill people. And this is no exaggeration. This is what he's trying to teach you so you can win because it's the truth. Okay. Real MAGA Republicans. Um, former Attorney General Michael Mukasey said that President Trump is probably correct that there was surveillance on Trump Tower, actually far greater than would have ever been believed. Now, you see, this is why we need to decode these. Good. Because what Good what's luck. he saying is, uh, folks, hello, uh, remember when I said wiretapping of Trump Tower, I'm right? And even Clapper has come out and said, yes, every single American is surveilled. We just showed you how through AT&T, every single communication on every single device, uh, uh, telephone, whatever. That's why they need all these data collection centers. It's all collected. It's because they've got to have it collected someplace. Oh, yeah. So he, he was right about that. Now, what he says, actually far greater was going on than you would believe. Here's what you won't believe. You keep hearing us say it. Few people say it. Robert Hannigan, the British NSA guy, he's the head of their NSA, more or less, came over, worked with uh, with John Brennan, and worked directly out of Fort Meade, Maryland, the head of the NSA, to spy on Trump Towers. Trump knows that, but he can't keep reminding you of that because people are blind to the news. If he said that, he would be accused of being a crazy man. It's just like the crazy remarks that uh, that Mark Warner just made. He can't tell you the truth, folks. If he told you the truth, it'd be like why you tell other people to come listen to this channel because we're one of the few people telling you the truth. He can't tell you the truth. So we have to decode it for him. So Trump, we believe you and we know what was going on. Robert Hannigan quit three days after the election. Hmm. I wonder if that's a coincidence. The very guy who was spying on Trump at Trump Towers, who was spying on Veselnitskaya's setup of the Secretary of State, had to allow her specifically to come into this country to set up Don Jr. in that meeting and Jared and Manafort, which was set up by a British spy and had Russian agents in it that had to have special visas allowed by the State Department, allowing them to come into the country just to do that frame up, that set up while British spies working out of the NSA were spying on Trump. That's how bad it is. Someday this will come out. It already has come okay, out. Wait, but wait a minute. Let's get really clear here. These are British spies uh, interfering with our election. That Those are grounds for war. These people are not our friends if they're doing this. The five eyes, as I always say, four of them need to be poked out. We don't need to have the Brits in our business, nor the uh, New Zealand, nor Australia, nor Canada. We don't need them. We never have. They aren't helping. And you know what? They don't need us either. They'd probably be very glad that we got out of their We're lives. not at war with anyone. No, Unless but, you still believe no. we're in a war with terrorism because you believe terrorists brought down I disagree. The buildings in 911. I don't. I believe that we did not win the American Revolutionary War, and we are in a war. We just don't know it, and that's why we've got to claim our independence from Britain. I stand corrected. We are still in the first American Revolution, and we are fighting the second American Revolution to end the first American Revolution and get the Brits out and get the globalists out and get our borders secure, or we're going to turn into what Europe has turned into, which is called the European Union of Soros. 
The next tweet is the Red Hen Restaurant should focus more on cleaning its filthy canopies, <laughs> doors, and windows badly needs a paint job rather than refusing to serve a fine person like Sarah Huckabee Sanders. I always had a rule. If a restaurant is dirty on the outside, it is dirty on the inside. And you know what's really beautiful about this, Thomas, is that he can say that as an expert restaurateur. Absolutely. And as who he is, and just points out the absolute backwardness of the Democrats who are always virtue signaling. And yet, who are they really? They're the ones who are the haters. Um, The next tweet, I have tried to stay uninvolved with the Department of Justice and FBI, although I do not legally have to, because of the now totally discredited and very expensive witch hunt currently going on. But you do have to ask why the DOJ and FBI aren't giving over requested documents. Even after Trump came in, intervened, and put John Kelly on the task and assigned Lausch to be the very person who makes sure that these documents are given over, 1,400 of them were given over. So you got Mark Meadows saying, no, 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 they weren't all given over. And then you have Nuna saying, no, I don't have the ones on FISA. I want unredacted. I want to see the evidence. How in the world you got these FISA court warrants for Carter Page when he didn't even come near the Trump campaign? No, no, no. I want these. These are all obfuscations. So now they've set up a special office and they've dumped millions of documents in there that aren't the documents being asked for. And they say that they're giving the documents. No, they're not. Liars, liars pants on fires. So what's really going on? This is their hiding. What are they hiding? Their crimes. The second you see the evidence that was presented to the FISA court, as Nuna says, it's it's all coming down because all the people involved in the special counsel are all going down because they were all part of these attacks. These this is a continuing counterintelligence attack an operation it never was an investigation because there was never a crime they tried to invent crimes and couldn't even invent crimes the only crimes committed were by them not by trump so he's saying when are they going to give over the documents jeff sessions has anybody seen jeff sessions no no Such a difference in the media coverage of the same immigration policies between the obama administration and ours Actually, we have done a far better job in that our facilities are cleaner and better run than were the facilities under Obama. Fake news is working overtime. The Obama facilities came under one legal attack after the next for their filthiness, for the lack of nutrition, and for the fact that they were shooting up the children with drugs. Now they're trying to even blame those lawsuits that happened during Obama's times on Trump. They literally shot the children up. Now, what were they shooting them up with? Immunizations, folks. Sorry, you go into any prison, you're going to get the immunizations. If you come across the border, you don't have your shot record, you're getting immunizations. Those are the immunizations they're talking about. And then they're saying they give them psychotropics. You mean Ritalin because they can't calm down because they've gone through post-traumatic shock or they have given other drugs, psychotropic drugs, yes, because they just went through the most horrible human trafficking of their life. Call this what it is. Human trafficking during the Obama time. That's how bad it got. We have lots of evidence of that. We have the lawsuits. We have the cases. We have Obama making excuses. We have the evidence. Most of the pictures you're seeing right now of what's going on at the border, those are Obama Obama era pictures. That's what you're seeing. Look closely at them. Don't believe the lies. What he has done, national emergency declared upon what? Human trafficking. This is human trafficking. These aren't children being separated from their parents, as we keep pointing out. If they had documentation, they're never separated. If you don't have documentation, it's because you're following the Obama-era policy coming up saying, you want asylum, this is your child. Well, what they are, the um, these invaders, is that they're mules. You know, a mule carries drugs, but they also carry other valuable commodities, and that is children. Hiring many thousands of judges and going through a long and complicated legal process is not the way to go. will always be dysfunctional. People must simply be stopped at the border and told they cannot come into the U.S. illegally. Children brought back to their country. Exactly as happens on almost every other border in the world. And used to happen even between the countries in Europe. The train would stop and they have to look at your passport they have to check out who you are and if you don't have a document you go to jail 
I saw this happen all the time. This is the way it used to be. Now, Open Borders, Soros Nation, the European Union of Soros, well, no, they want completely open borders and they want even criminals to be invited in and put on the dole and given a card to vote for Democrats. Now, what should we do? We should do the only humane thing, which is what he is doing in the cases where it requires this. You separate the children from those who you cannot identify or with their parents and send them back to the country they came from, not bring them to America so they never see their parent again. That's what Obama did. Obama shipped like them can- all over America so they never, ever saw their parents again. Oh, and then they came up missing human trafficking. Yeah, because it's like a kidnapping. That's exactly what it was. What do you think about those poor parents? And people want to say there was only 100,000 during his time. No, 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 no. There was 100,000 in a matter of a few months that came across because for some reason, magically, 50,000 children at a time showed up at the border without any adults and they walked across the border and Obama picked them up and put them in those cages. That's where those pictures came from. Sent them out to the agency that's been sued that still still is fighting that they didn't do anything wrong and then shipped them out to 184 different agencies, usually under the auspices of being a religious agency, which they are not, and then the children come up missing afterwards. This is what Ivanka discovered when she looked into human trafficking. This is what Trump was told. This is why he's declared war against human trafficking. It's happening in our southern border. He keeps saying it over and over again. Again, say what he says. These are his planks. These are the planks that will win because these are the only planks of a democratic process that will help Americans remain free. Final one. If this is done, illegal immigration will be stopped in its tracks and at very little by comparison cost. This is the only real answer and we must continue to build a wall. Here's what would happen in any country. You start going across a country, first off, you wouldn't have got in without showing who you were and having a passport and proving who you were right? You're not even going to get in. Oh, let's say you get in and then you go across to go to another country. Well, all you have to do is show your documentation and seek asylum for a good reason. And then one of those locations is going to take you directly to an entry point of the country that you wish to enter that accepts your asylum request. That's the way it was supposed to happen with all the migrants, but that's been thrown out the window because they call them migrants. None of them are migrants. Two point... 5% or less work. These aren't migrant workers. This is an invasion in Europe and it's an invasion in America. And the temporary workers, they're not even counted as undocumented because they're documented. Temporary workers, we love temporary workers. We couldn't survive without them in California to pick our fruit and to do our menial labor. And that's the reason that Republicans who own large things like, you know, free, you know, cheap, almost free labor. Well, let's get real. I mean, we all do because then our goods and services are less money. So folks, you know, when we seal up the border and start working with the rule of law, things might cost a little bit more. And then Betsy, what do you think happens once you get your, even your asylum papers and you show up at that country you want to enter in with a child that isn't yours? You go to jail for human trafficking and the child, they attempt to find out where they are And then that's when a lawyer is called in. That's when social services tries to find out where that child came from. But you must prosecute the human trafficker who brought you that child, trying to use that child to seek asylum, saying that, you know, their country's war-torn. Well, let's stop the war. Or that uh, gangs are killing. The gangs should be in jail. Let's look into why the MS gangs aren't in jail. Let's look at why Obama allowed them to come up as if they were children into this country with... MS-13 tattoos all over their body where they are taught to be less than human, to murder, to kill, and to enjoy it. No, we are talking about human trafficking. This is a national emergency, and y'all should listen, if you're running for office, to what the MAGA planks are. They're right here in his tweets. Just simply get on board, and if you don't believe these, get out. But if you believe these and you want to get on board, this is what's happening, folks. He's not backing off. He's never been anything but consistent. And we should just listen to him and believe his tweets.